Welcome to this week's program of Ascend TV. We're broadcasting this week from uh, John O'Connell High School in San Francisco at the Support for Family Resource Fair, where we'll be interviewing a number of the exhibitors. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. And once again, this is Ascend TV. Hi, I'm Greg Yates, co-chair of Ascend. Welcome. And here we are at the Ascend booth at the at John O'Connell High School uh, at the Support for Families Resource Fair, which we've attended and for many years. So Ascend is an uh, all-volunteer organization uh, composed of three parts. It's adults on the autism spectrum, family members and friends, and then professionals who work with them. So it's unusual in that way. Uh, we collaborate, we work, and uh, sort of bounce ideas and feelings and thoughts off each other. So... Uh, Ascend is a very active community. We have a lot of projects going on right now. Uh, first of all, perhaps foremost, we have general meetings every month. Uh, they are free and open to the public. Uh, and they're open to both you know, family members, professionals, or adults on the autism spectrum. You can all come. Uh, and they are held at the ARC of San Francisco, those meetings. Uh, we have various projects. Let's see. We have, of course, Ascend TV is one of them. And we have a very active job club with uh, uh, very regular meetings, and including an online meetings for people who are on the spectrum trying to get employment. We have a, a, an active LinkedIn community, uh, and, and it's called the Spectrum Employment Community by Ascend on LinkedIn. We have a number of social groups associated, affiliated with Ascend, Friends Like Me, which is run at the ARC, which is a, a social get-together with games and such for people on the spectrum. And there's also the Autastics, which was a founding uh, organization, compo uh, which is a social uh, and activity group for adults on the autism spectrum. And um, so we just do all kinds of stuff. Uh, we do, uh, it's, our name basically says who we are. It says we, uh, we do education, networking, and development. Oh, I left out something very important that we do, which is we run conferences. Every couple of years, we put on a conference, which has been um, a major driving force on the West Coast uh, for adult autism. That's usually done in collaboration with uh, San Francisco State University. And that's pretty much uh, what occurs to me to say right at the moment. Uh, so, Greg, I know that there's been a great deal of increased activity uh, in Ascend over the past year or so. Uh, can you tell us about some of the more recent programs that we've been doing? Well, I think I've mentioned the ones uh, that we are doing. Oh, the, uh, you know, but the, the increase in activity, I don't know, it's just sort of a, uh, an autocatalytic effect. You know, people just sort of bouncing off each other and the energy grows. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, let's not overlook the fact that there is a rising awareness of adult aut autism generally and, and then, of course, adult autism, and that has a lot to do with why we're taking off at this point. Yeah. Excellent. Do you and the other uh, heads of the organization have any particular plans for uh, going forward? I understand that we're, as you mentioned, a, a conference upcoming later on yeah. in the year. Yes, that's true. Uh, we have a conference planned for the fall, uh, at, which will be held at probably at the Seven, yes, at the Seven Hills Conference Center at San Francisco State University. Uh, you can check us out online at ascendsf, excuse me, ascend.org, and there will be plenty of information there about that conference. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, it's always fun putting these on a lot of work, uh, but they uh, have been very successful in the past, and we expect this one to be as well. Excellent. I understand that while it's just in the preliminary stages, one of the themes that have been proposed is like autism and uh, leadership. Is that correct? Yes, that's actually one of the things, uh, ideas we're working with. As I say, we're in the planning stage now, but what are, generally speaking, what we are hoping to do is to uh, have uh, leaders in various facets of, of adult autism and autism services come together uh, in each, and so have leaders represent in each area. So, for example, we, uh, we have just recently had a meeting on uh, autism in the creative economy. The many autistic people have uh, substantial creative talents, and we're putting together a uh, community is growing around this at Ascend, and that would be an example where we would uh, we are actually 
functioning as leaders in this area, but we'd have representatives, leaders, representatives of that. And then likewise in employment and the other areas I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So, just repeat, I understand that next week there's actually going to be a meeting of the Ascend Job Club, and then yeah. the following week will be the, me the general meeting with some very interesting speakers? Yes. Uh, what we've got planned now for the meeting, the, the general meeting, is, uh, first of all, Paul Nussbaum, who er is an adult on the autism spectrum and earlier uh, ran a, uh, did a Trans-Sierra Ski Expedition to raise awareness of autistic abilities. That was in 2006, and now he's gearing up to do a similar expedition across the ice cap of Greenland in 2017. Uh, and he will be uh, presenting uh, some of the preliminary work he's done. He went on an expedition uh, in Yellowstone Park recently, and uh, we'll be talking about that. Uh, and then, in addition, uh, we have, uh, we're going to be showing a movie uh, about autism and uh, sensory issues in autism, a new film out, short film, that should be very interesting, and, and uh, it uh, includes a couple of people I know personally, and who, uh, one of whom has actually, uh, Nick Walker, uh, spoken uh, at Ascend in the past. So that should be an interesting presentation as well, and that will go along with the discussion by the general people at the Ascend meeting of their own issues with uh, sensation. Very good to hear. And, and once again, where is the uh, general meeting held? The general meeting is held at the Ark of San Francisco, which is 1500 Howard Street at the corner of 11th Street and Howard in San Francisco. It's typically on the third Saturday of the month, uh, and it runs typically between 10 a.m. and noon. It's free. Uh, but donations are always welcome. And uh, there's usually light refreshments at a break. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Greg. I know we'll be hearing a lot more from you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Carry on. And now we're going to be talking with Claudia Villarreal, who's going to be telling us about the uh, Community Alliance for Special Education. Hi. My name is Claudia, and what we offer here at CASE is free, over-the-phone consultations with special education advocates, and you get a free consult, meaning you get to speak with an advocate for 45 minutes to an hour in length over the phone and I schedule those consults and if need be if you have any further questions about your uh, child's IEP or 504 plan or any assessments that's what we discuss in length um, at CASE and we offer our services to parents and professionals as well. Well, thank you. I understand that a pretty fair number of uh, the families that you deal with in case uh, have uh, members on the autism spectrum. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. I would say more than half of the clients that we have have children with autism or on the spectrum. Correct. Oh, very interesting. So can you tell us about some of the uh, programs that the uh, families <laughs> with the members on the autism spectrum end up uh, going into. I understand it's a wide spectrum of uh, programs that they do. Yes, that's correct. So it's all case by case. It's a, a, a wide spectrum, like you said. Mm -hmm. So it would depend. Sometimes we have parents that want their child in a very specific setting, mm -hmm. and maybe not the mainstream setting is exactly what their child needs. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends. So we can offer referrals to private settings where all individuals at that school have autism or on the spectrum, or perhaps they want to be in the mainstream setting. Mm -hmm. So it, it varies. It is all case by case. Excellent. Do the people that you deal with who have members and their families in the autism spectrum, are these people who are all levels of functionality, or do you typically do low or high-functioning individuals? All levels of functionality, certainly, and also, I would say, in terms of the families that we service, autism affects every type of family. <laughs> so it's also whether they be high income, low income, all different types of nationalities. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really right matter. So uh, that's who we service: is any family that's in need or just has general questions. Sometimes they're in the very beginning stages about. Uh, their child and, mm -hmm. and diagnosis and whatnot. And sometimes they just want information. Mm. Excellent. Where are you located? Do you serve uh, Bay Area as a whole, or are you, you know, regionally based within one of the uh, area cities? Or can you tell us about that? Sure. 
So we service the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. We go as far as San Mateo counties, Contra Costa, Alameda, and also the counties that are over the Golden Gate, so Solano, Napa, Sonoma. And it's actually based on the advocate because we have advocates that are located in different areas of the Bay Area. So they are specifically, I could say, not only just professionals, but experts in their counties about how to address the needs. And they, they, they are more aware of the schools also in their counties. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how we partner the families with the advocate. Very good. If some of our viewers wanted to find out more about CASE and, and contact you or other people in the organization, what would the best ways of doing that be? So, if I can give out the contact phone number. Please do. Okay. So, <laughs> we ask that parents just call or professionals. The contact phone number is area code 415. 431-2285. My name is Claudia. I do the intake. I'm the one that answers the phone. It's a very small office, but we service the entire Bay Area. And so uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have and schedule that free consult for you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Claudia. Really appreciate your time and very best of luck to you and all the folks at CASE. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now we're going to be talking... Er, Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And now we're going to be talking with Cindy Osaki and Talia Leibovitz of the Autism Center for Northern California. Thank you. Hello. Can you tell us about your organization? Yeah. So the Autism Center of Northern California was founded by Dr. Bryna Siegel, who created and then, or founded and then ran the UCSF Autism Clinic for about 25 years and since then retired and opened up the ACNC, which is a nonprofit. So within the ACNC, there are four different clinics. Uh, one of them is our assessment clinic, our neurodevelopmental assessment clinic. We have the Autism Home Clinic, which is for returning clients or clients that already hold a diagnosis of autism. Um, a school and behavior consultation clinic where we focus on school planning and appropriate school placements and supports and then our jumpstart program which Cindy is the coordinator of and that's a week-long parent education program excellent yeah so Cindy could you tell us about jumpstart okay. is a hands-on training program um, for parents typically with the child um, with either autism or showing early developmental delays um, it's a five-day intensive program Monday through Friday um, from 9 to 3, and they go through behavioral training, speech and language training, and social skills training. Um, and then they also meet with Dr. Siegel, um, the founder of the program in our center, um, Friday afternoon for a wrap-up session and just planning for the child for the next five years um, of their life. If a parent suspects that their children, uh, or if their parent suspects that their child might possibly be displaying some signs of autism, what should they do? Yeah, so if a parent is recognizing that their child is having challenges that are inhibiting their child from appropriate development, it's always great to get them in as early as possible. So to either take them to their pediatrician who can refer them out for an evaluation or bring them to a specialist like Dr. Siegel mm -hmm. um, and just do an evaluation. And an evaluation with a great clinician is not going to guarantee a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to screen out whether or not the child meets criteria for autism and whether or not they do what kind of services and treatment planning that they can benefit from. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Now, a number of the members of our organization, Ascend, uh, have never been formally diagnosed, and they are an adult at this point. And we found that it's very difficult, typically, as an adult to get diagnosis. Uh, do you have any suggestions for our viewers who might wish to be diagnosed and uh, avoid perhaps some of the difficulties? Um, we deal with adults at the Neurodevelopmental Assessment Clinic. So we've individualized adult assessments because they're different than kids. So mm -hmm. um, the initial part is a one to two hour screening. So we break up the appointments into two sessions, possibly one, if we do the one to two hour screening and then decide it's not worth doing a full battery of measures with this adult, either they don't meet criteria for autism or like a diagnosis isn't going to serve them in any way. Uh, we typically don't like to give out a diagnosis just 
for diagnosis purposes. Um, so if an adult calls us and says we need vocational help, we need residential living, we need some sort of support, so that's the kind of adults we would want to see at our mm -hmm. clinic. Um, and then from the one to two hour screening, um, if we feel like we need to do further measures, we'll ask them to come back in and do a full diagnostic evaluation where we will administer probably an ADOS um, or, you know, it, it, depending on high, how, or high, how low or high their functioning mm -hmm. is, uh, do like an IQ test um, because oftentimes places like the regional center uh, will need an IQ in order to serve them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Can you tell us uh, a little bit more about how you have some adults come in, uh, presumably fairly high functioning, mm -hmm. for the purposes of uh, work-related evaluation? Yeah. So some of our adult clients, just for example, will reach out to the Autism Center of Northern California to talk about certain supports they need within their work environment. Um, and we can meet with them, do an evaluation, decide for ourselves what we think they need in, in addition to what they think they need, um, and come up with the appropriate supports. Uh, oftentimes, I will say with adults, it's really steering them in the direction of work that is going to um, allow them to function. So sometimes we get adults that say like, I can't do this job. And so we brainstorm with them. What kind of job can you do? What are your interests? What kinds of things do you like? And how can you function in a work environment? Um, oftentimes we'll also refer out for vocational training as another mm -hmm. option. Excellent. And by your name, you are uh, serving Northern California. Mm -hmm. How much of uh, the region do you serve? Are you mainly San Francisco, Bay Area, northern part of the state? Yeah, so our center is located in downtown San Francisco. Mm -hmm. With that being said, we have clients coming in from all over the country as well as outside of the country. Um, and Dr. Siegel herself and some of our team members will work on cases in other places and you know fly to those cases to do those evaluations. So we are flexible and open. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And if some of our viewers, either in the area or, as you say, around the country, mm -hmm. wanted to contact you or other members of your organization, how would they best do that? Yeah, so the best way is probably to email. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's info at acnc.org. Mm -hmm. They can also check out our website, uh, which is www.acnc.org. Uh, and they can call us at 415-391-3417. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Talia thank you. and Cindy. We really appreciate it. And very best of uh, luck to you and the center and Jumpstart as well. Thank you. We're now going to be talking with Jamie Doyle of Oculus Architects, who's going to be discussing a project that his firm is working on, very relevant to our community. Jamie? Uh, hi there. Uh, Jamie Doyle here, Oculus Architects. Um, uh, what you have in front of you here are, are some design concepts we developed for affordable housing for adults with autism. It was part of a competition entry sponsored by Autism Speaks um, that we've just recently com uh, completed. Um, what we've done is we've come up with two, two different places where we think uh, we can get affordable housing to work. One is using floating communities on water and the second is using surface car parks possibly car parks used by uh, municipal uh, city departments such as a DPW or even retail car parks, car parks in front of supermarkets. Um, these could be in city locations, they could also be in suburban locations. Uh, and in suburbs, uh, if they were, say, in, the car, in a car lot of a supermarket, they would be adjacent to shopping and public transport. Um, the, the part of also what we try to do is to try and build cheaply as well. So we're using modular prefabricated uh, living units, one beds and two beds, using a combination of two, two one beds to make a, a two, two bed unit. Um, the floating community uh, is, is, is basically a, a, a floating courtyard with six, six dwellings arranged around it and a communal, and a communal pod. In the, in, the, in the courtyard, there would be a sensory garden uh, made using planters of various different heights, lengths, and configurations, and that creates kind of protected spaces in front of, in front of the units, uh, and it also combines with a public recreational pier, a very small scale public recreational pier that would be just a, a two and a half feet a higher level above it. So what we're trying to do is create sensitive environments that. Uh, that interact with sort of quiet public spaces to have gentle social interaction um, 
And the same applies then for the car parking um, solutions that we've looked into. So we buy by t- by housing surface car parking and into uh, efficient automated car stacking, we can build over and in front of these areas and reaccommodate the existing car parking. Um, by that, we create a platform upon which we can then put also put the same prefabricated modular units that we've shown in the uh, floating um, schemes, and those are arranged as well around courtyards that have sensory gardens. Um, again, trying to look at how people can gather together. So maybe some of these schemes could be integrated. Uh, in other words, they could have people from the aut- autistic community, but also uh, other folks as well involved. Uh, or they could also function as standalone and more managed and supportive housing. So we try to take a broad sweep uh, through that kind of whole world, if you like, to create these two or three proposals. Excellent. I understand that you're in the proposal stage now, Jamie. Uh, what's the timeline on that? When are they supposed to evaluate? I, and I go believe forward? Autism Speaks uh, will have a result in mid-April. And what's really fascinating about, about the competition is that it's open source. So this is one of 300 mm-hmm. entries. So the idea is that uh, um, this is like a, a, a huge book or resource for the entire community to access and use as they need to. Excellent. One thing I'm curious about the design is about how many people are likely to be able to live in any given uh, design. Well, uh, as we, uh, one of the things, that, um, one of the the art, the art of this is to try and try and find small pieces of land that mm-hmm. are available, and that really restricts the scale of them. So, if you start at say the floating community, it has six dwellings and a communal yes. a communal building. Um, that's because we need to keep the scale of it down for environmental reasons but if you go to the suburban car park building and the urban car park building you're getting say nine ten units in the suburban because it's squeezed down to two stories you can get more units in an urban model because you can go up to five say five stories so we have about 30 20 mm-hmm. units in that but you're really looking at that kind of scale you're not looking at 100 units or more you're looking at six seven nine ten And now, Will is going to be speaking with uh, Dwight Beam of the Special Olympics. Hi, I'm Will Burnick. I'm here with Dwight Beam. Hi, Will. So, so first question. How did you get involved with Special Olympics? Well, I've been doing Special Olympics for... This is my 30th year coaching Special Olympics. And 30 years ago, a, a co-worker... Uh, got something in the mail and she went to it and she said hey you should come check it out it's a lot of fun and I went and it was a lot of fun and I've been doing it for the, the next 30 years What's, which, which sports do you participate in? I am the director of the soccer program and that means that I'm in charge of, of uh, making sure the whole program runs. We have a, a facility, a field to play on. The equipment is is all in uh, good shape, and all the athletes have medicals. Um, I also just help out with some other sports. I help out with floor hockey, and I help out with track. And that, I just assist uh, the head coaches uh, with the the different. Uh, in, in track, I help out with the floor uh, with the shot put. And then Florida hockey, I just help run the sport. Do, do you do you get new members for Special Olympics every year? Yes, but not enough. We need more athletes out. We need we should have twice as many athletes out at our practices as we have. So I'm telling all people that have a, a son or daughter, a loved one with any type of intellectual disability, to come out to Special Olympics San Francisco. Check out our website. Special Olympics Northern California Sonk dot org and um, and come out and join the world of winners. Now we are borrowing a classroom here at John O'Connell so that Stacy Kennedy can deliver our cultural report. Thank you, Keith. So for today's cultural report, I would like to bring up the first thing is uh, Friends Like Me, which is the Center for Lifelong Learning. They, will be ha- they have a game night um, every Mondays 
5.30 to 8.30 p.m. And Tuesdays, which is afternoons, Tuesdays, 3 to 6 p.m. at the Ark of San Francisco, 1500 Howard Street. Uh, the description of games are games you can play on the Wii, you can play ping pong, pool, Pictionary, Uno, and Bingo. And Tuesdays are the same games, and in addition is air hockey. The same place will also have movie night every Wednesday starting at 5.30 p.m., and it goes till 8.30 p.m. To find out more ARC events, go to the, to the website thearcsf.org, or you can call 415-255-7200 with the extension of 156. In late March, Anlor Davin, Anlor Davin's book, Being Seen, comes out on Amazon.com, a memoir about her life as an autistic mom, a French immigrant, and a Zen student. Again, her blog is autism.wordpress.com. She will be at the Autism Awareness event in San Rafael on April 2nd to talk about her book. The title of the event is Autismness, and it will be located at the address 10 Bayview, San Rafael, the zip code 94901, and I will bring this up again sometime before April 2nd again. And it will start at 1, it'll go till about 3. Saturday, March 26th, is an autistics meeting, and autistics is um, autistics unified, shoot, autistics unified, <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Meeting in Daly City at the Medical Seton Center in Sullivan Avenue. Starts at 1. Adam Pollock is the founder of this group. You can come and talk about your life and what you've been up to. You can talk about anything. Here, here's the full abbreviation. Autistics united together and showing they indeed can succeed. And that is all I have for my cultural report. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy, and to our viewers uh, locally and around the world. If you have events uh, relevant to the community, you know, please uh, let us know uh, through the information that we have both on uh, our program and also on the Ascend website. Thank you again, Stacy. Well, that's this week's episode of Ascend TV. Uh, I'm Keith Halperin, and I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacy Kennedy. To all our viewers, have a great week.